As Nigeria gets set for a new democratic dispensation, there is still much to be said about the election that have brought these people thus far. You're welcome to Elections Debrief. My name is Abib Oladapo. Today we have the presidential candidate of the Abonda, Renewal, Abonda Nigeria Renewal Party at the 2019 um, presidential elections, Mr. Tokwe Kola de Fasua. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, you're welcome. So, sir, um, we'd like to get your... The election has come and gone, but what are the lessons for you in the last elections? Hmm. Um, well, I think, uh, first of all, is that if I had to do it all over again, mm -hmm. I'd do it the same way. Um, I've been actually fighting some wars with some people who cavalierly dismiss what we did and some say you guys had you did it with greed you didn't come together and all of that i mean it was the first time we had people like people like us you know yeah. maybe like myself show ref and kingsley if you like you know um stepping forward you know right out of the blues you know people who were private sector people people who are media people uh people who had been doing the struggle and looter all their lives saying that look we can we have to get involved and at that level you know, to basically to be saying that, look, that that job of being a president is not a big deal that we can do better. And that was what we did, so I won't change a thing. Of course, by way of the more granular experiences, um, uh, it was obvious that, uh, of course, because we stepped up and they saw that the challenge was real, especially at the intellectual level, they had bred politicians, they made sure they did everything to frustrate that. And of mm. course, they wrote whatever the election, the results they wanted to write. Mm. Uh, don't believe the hype, you know. Um, invariably, they won 97% of the vote between two of them. And the rest of us shared only 3% of the votes. But hey, that wasn't real. So it, it was just what they wanted to. And you know, the message is to say to those 40 years old and 45 years old that would want mm. to try eventually, never to try. Now, people don't understand that, you know, that look, it's like a beating down to say that, look, it's Machiavellian, uh, that if you try it, we're going to destroy you, we're going to make sure that you don't get more than three votes or five okay. votes and so on. Okay. And you see, the youth of this country and the not so young should never succumb to that because the people who are doing this, even people like, if you like, even Atiku himself, these guys have been running this country since they were in their 30s. Yeah. Atiku basically resigned from customs and being 37 or 40 years old and someone that was a billionaire and all that stuff. Buhari had been running this country since was 40 years old. Who says a 35, 40 year old person should not run this country? When did we sign up to gerontocracy? We did not sign up to gerontocracy. Yeah. We also need new ideas, and in fact, it's only new ideas that can liberate this country and mm. take us to where we need to be. You just talked about your, your, um, how the election was. You've been able to demystify um, the position of the presidency and challenge young people to come into the, into the free and, of course, um, try to challenge the status quo. But let's talk specifically about that election, the whole process while, um, before the polls, at the polls, and after the polls, what is your or what are your impressions over these three key areas? What do you okay, think? So, okay, before the polls, yeah. um, before the polls, well, well, you know, we were getting involved for the first time. I was getting involved for the first yeah. time. It was very interesting going around the country, beautiful country from north to south. I did almost thirty-two states, you know, yeah. um, uh, and I was I did that to learn about Nigeria. Uh, I think at the end I was the only candidate that went as far as some of this Boko Haram territory. I went from Maduguri to Bamatulu, passing Beni Sheikh, uh, Makintakuri, all those places and so mm. on, where Boko Haram had had their, Stronghold. their, their, their flags, you yeah. know. But of course, uh, they, the government has started rebuilding, but usually when they start to rebuild, from time to time, the Boko Haram boys come again and scatter everything. Yeah. And in those places, you know, by 4 p.m., after 4 p.m. prayers, anything can happen. That's when the boys operate. So, um, you know, that was what I did. Of course, before the election also was the issue of the Electoral Act, which, yeah. you know, was the amendment that the National Assembly wanted yeah. to pass through, which favored people like us, you know, the whole idea of electronic collation and transmission yeah. and all of that. And in fact, ab initio, what we were advocating for was a scenario where the smaller elections would take place first. Yeah. That means the state assembly wants. We felt yeah. okay, fine. We're 91 parties now. If 91 parties are actually contesting at that level, 
you know, without an overbearing influence of who is the president, which party is he from. Perhaps we could snag one or two things. Yeah, yeah. That was the whole idea. And of course, the president said no. The president said no to that, said no to even the idea of electronic transmission, said no to everything. everything in the electronics. And by the time he was saying that no, he said uh, it was too close to the election. Yeah. However, he was also the one that delayed it. So, uh, so it's a case of having the knife and the yam. Unfortunately, I mean, I would have, one would have thought some of these um, fairly old men they should have a bit of uh, perspective and integrity, but that did not play out mm -hmm. this time around. That was before the election. During the election, uh, also quite interesting, what I saw this time was an overbearing um, influence, or rather, if you like, involvement of youth coppers. Uh, I never knew it used to be like that. I've voted a few times. I would think that, you know, at least there used to be one or two people who were in coppers who were supervising the coppers. This time around, the mm. copper was also the chief electoral, I yeah. mean, uh, if you like, presiding the principal electoral officer, officer whatever, or the uh, presiding officer, officer, you know, yeah. apart from the, the POs were the presiding officers, those are the coppers, then yeah. the guy, uh, uh, the, SPO. The, the SPO was also a copper. So they left everything to coppers. And, you know, number one, you jeopardize the lives of those children. I imagine when I was a copper. And you leave the, the job of collating and, and counting elections in my country, collating and transmitting everything to me as a copper yeah. at 20 or 21. I think, I think that was quite irresponsible of INEC. There was nobody that we could actually, in many states where there were issues, there was nobody we could walk up to. You were complaining to a youth copper, a youth copper who was an ad hoc staff. You know? And mm -hmm. of course, there was also instances where I believe that some of them were under some influence. You know, like in the place where I voted, it was clear that some of them were torn between APC and A and PDP. Come on, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would have thought, for example, now if we actually found that some of those coppers had issues of integrity and so on, we lose start jailing a copper. You know, we needed people who we could hold responsible yeah. and know that if you actually, if you actually, um, if you find uh, culpable, yeah, yeah, then we can actually, actually hold you responsible and send yeah. you to jail. Yeah. You know, I think that uh, the INEC should, um, should not take the ele our elections with levity anymore. It shouldn't be something conducted by coppers. Mm -hmm. And of course, after the elections is where we are right now. Uh, you know, of course, they've done whatever it is they wanted to yeah. do. The results are out. Nigerians are complaining again. The same Nigerians that voted for these same them. people, they voted for continuity. Now they are beginning to see the beginnings of continuity. That come. so you know, you begin to wonder: Is this the life our people have signed up for? Perhaps this is the way it's meant to be. You know, mm. so that's it. So I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion on, on voter party. It was very obvious during the large le last election. I disagree. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things, you know, in the place where I vote, which is where I also voted in 2015, we had almost times three turnout. In okay. that place, it was chaos. Okay. Luckily, this time, they gave us double the number of coppers. Okay. okay, in 2015, I knew we had about four coppers. In fact, we were the ones. I was wondering then, too, where were the people who were responsible? Because then we had about three or four coppers. And you know, these people, how many of us, they counted the vote all through the night until 7 a.m. the next day. We were the ones assisting them. No provision for generator, no provision for their food. No, look, the, some of them collapsed where they, they were. This time around, we had more coppers. Okay. All right. So, but hey, we had more numbers. Mm. You people should never underestimate just how you know, how angry Nigerians have become, how anxious Nigerians have become. And of course, the whole idea of, you know, you know, we needed a change. You know, people should not. And also the effect of the new candidates who mm -hmm. were going around and sensitizing people. A lot of people who never used to vote before came out this time around. So you, you think know, so, there was... So, I was somewhere and some of the guys, I think the younger guys were saying that they, they found that there were fewer voters. I said, no, it is, it is totally false. It is false. You see, but it, it plays into a certain um, 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 script. You know, like the other, look, the way they had done the election, how can you say, number one, Nigeria's population has increased from then to now. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Number two, a lot more youths are getting involved. Social yes. media is a factor. Yes. But you see, it plays into a certain rhetoric. They say, oh, uh, people vote in the north. They don't vote in the south, which is wrong. And then I've heard people say things like, uh, you know, in the South, all these boys, instead of voting, they are playing football. Come on. Well, that, was, that was what we noticed. A state like Lagos had 6 million voters, exactly. registered that's voters, that's and 1 million. Tell you something. 
that should tell you something. Number one, I'm talking, I'm talking about voters, vote suppression here. Okay. All right. Okay. Number one is that a number, a lot of those votes were suppressed. They wrote, okay. they kept it down at a level. Okay, fine. We are less than one million voters in Lagos, right? Yeah. Hmm? And Lagos is the most populated state in the whole of the country. Yes. Number one, the most populated in the whole of the South. Yeah. In Kano State, we had about 2.4 million people voting. voting yes. In Sokoto State, about 2 million voting. About in Borno um, State, about 2.1 million. million. In yeah. Kaduna State, we had about 2.2 million. Yes. Look, the way we should do it is to say, look, if indeed we couldn't find more than 1 million out of 6 million voters in Lagos, which begins to question not even the, the, the population of Lagos and also the numbers mm -hmm. of registered voters, voters that are, were declared in Lagos, that should begin to question it. That indeed, why would 6 million people register and only 1, 1 million people can't even come out? Mm -hmm. Do they exist? Do those people exist? But then again, you go to the north and you're having 2, two million voters in Kaduna yes. State. Yeah. So what that tells you is this. In that election, we had... You know, I don't know how many at the end of the day, maybe, you know, the, most of the votes came from the north of this country. Yeah. Meaning that, you know, as a southern person, you know, if you don't find a way of appealing to the north, you can't win an election in this yeah. country. That's the truth, you know. But you see, I think that we should interrogate those numbers. Okay. I think that in the north, in the many parts of the north of this country, yeah, those votes were written. Simple. Because look, in 2015, we had almost the same thing. Even though in 2015 there were more votes in uh, Lagos yes. than there were in, in 2019. In, 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 yeah, in 2019. But you know what, what? What I noticed was you know in 2015 in Lagos it took three days to count and declare the election between uh, Ambadi and uh, and uh, Baje, I think. Yeah. yeah, you know yeah. between those two, it took three days. But the same elections were counted one day in Kano and declared the same day. Yeah. Look, no, let's think about logistics. Let's think about, you know, the sheer, the sheer intelligence that it requires to collate things from all over, you know, a vast place like Kano and get it signed up and, uh, come on. Okay. So I think it's something we need to be careful about. I personally don't believe Nigeria's population numbers in the first place. That's it. Remember when they wanted to recall Dino? Yeah. And, you know, one of the... Um, one of the uh, exercises uh, they had to do yeah. was to go and verify the vote, the, the signatures. Yeah. And so when they got down there to Inkogi State, what they found was they couldn't find 5% of the people. people yeah. Of course, a lot of names were duplicated. When they talk about um, all this voters card in INEC, INEC will say, look, they, they have like 6 million, 10 million people who haven't collected their voters. Those were names. A lot of them are names that politicians inserted in the system with a view to grabbing those voters card to use it to vote. Mm -hmm. Perhaps maybe because IT is actually kind of crippling them now, they yeah. probably have abandoned a lot of those things. So I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, Lord Lugard wrote about people he met in Nigeria and said that these people lack veracity, meaning that they don't like the truth. And I'm beginning mm -hmm. to think, look, we are basing almost everything in Nigeria on lies. Our numbers are wrong and, you know, false with our inflation number, our GDP number, our population number, you know, all, the, you know, I mean, we're living in lies. So, but hopefully with the involvement of people like me and you, maybe in time, we get it right. Okay. So, for you now, it's not a case of apathy. It's a case of suppression and Absolutely. manipulation. Absolutely. It's a case of frauds. Frauds. Frauds everywhere. Frauds everywhere. You know, and I, I, I insist, you know, it's a case of frauds everywhere. You know, indeed, I would think that, yeah, maybe a lot of the numbers in the South were, you know, close to the real thing, you yeah. know, because... It was in their interest to ensure, in the interest of the incumbency, to ensure that those numbers don't run away. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about in 2015, good luck Jonathan had about 1.8 million votes down there in River State, yes. in Delta 1.3 million. This time they couldn't find 500,000. Yes. Yeah. You know, but where they have the stronghold up north, the, okay, we were seeing the numbers spiking mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Look at between Arufa and the guy in PDP. Erufa had about 1.1 million votes. The guy had about 900,000 votes yes. in one day in Kaduna State. So, yeah. And in, in Lagos State, yes, you are telling me that people were not interested in Agbaje. Okay, fine. If were not, if people were not interested in Atiku and Buhari. No, yeah. They were not interested in the influence of King Slimogalu or Chore so, or Fela. Yeah. Look, I mean, look, one of the things that pained me the most about it for, for me. Uh, you know, I, I would say, okay, fine. You had the, we had the Chore, we had the Kingsley, we had the Fela. Yeah. And then you had me because um, 
I'm, I wasn't... I wasn't so much into the media. Well, in a way, I go on TV interviews, I write articles, and so on. But I was I was more positioned in as, as an intellectual in the media, yeah. not like in the media hugging kind of person. I'm not particularly a very public person. I, yeah. you know, I don't have a crowd. Maybe on like a fellow who had been working on these people, who you know, the, the youth, you know, for, for quite a long yeah. period of time. So these guys were up front, then I was there. You know, I had 4,340 votes. Mm. With all the work that these gentlemen did, you know, 30,000, 33,000 for Shore, mm. 20, 70,000 for, for Kingsley, Kingsley. 14,000 for, for Fela. I mean, mm. I think it's a travesty. I think it's a travesty. They just, you know, they just definitely did it that way so that people like them won't think, but they can't. We will continue to step up. I mean, mm. just yesterday, uh, I, I read, you know, it's a, it, it, another novice, another newbie in Lithuania has won the election. Yeah. And then someone comes here and says until you start from uh, local government and then mm. so 25 years after you're trying to listen i'm 40 almost 48 years old you know so until i'm 70 before i can run for president in my country it's a joke yeah okay so so um let's talk about your your campaign you already mentioned um how you but let's talk about the strategies that you you put in place for the election what were your expectations and what how did these strategies work, work okay. out for you? Well, did they work? Mm, yeah, my strategy was basically I positioned myself as the ideas person in that election. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, was, I was actually churning out a lot of ideas. And I was also saying that I didn't mind if they were going to steal the idea. Let them steal it so long yeah. as they use it. So my strategy, so basically what I did was, um, of course, I know that I can't, I don't have all the money in the world. No, but the first thing I did actually was say, okay, fine. If I'm going to run for this, you know, I'm making a point. Number one, I'm making a point. I'm positioning myself as the ideas person. I had a lot of ideas. I mean, of course, I mentioned the palm oil yeah. one. I, I was so much going on and on about the budgeting level. Yeah. I did my research about yeah. what was going on in South Africa, Angola, Algeria, Egypt, Kenya, Ghana, and so on. Compared with Nigeria, yeah. I said, this is yeah, rubbish that, that these guys too. are doing here. You know, so I was throwing out, I had this idea about education. I was saying that, look, the university students should be mm -hmm. on the road already. Yeah. Five million, six million of them, university, polytechnic, whatever. Put them on the road. This is the time. We have lost so much time. Okay. We are in so much deficit developmentally that, look, we can't afford to say uh, well, for you to get anything done, uh, you have to issue a contract and uh, Julius Beggars to come and, you know, come on. Okay. I passed last week. I was coming from Benin. I was going to Calabar. I had a lecture at the University of Calabar, so I went by road. From Benin, and you know, at some point we had to get to the uh, the, the, the the Casina Ala Obubra Road. That road is in a terrible state as well, in part terrible. You know, um, you know, but I'm thinking, look, you got students in University of Calabar, University of Uyo, University of Mka, University of Makodi. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, what are they doing? Foot, foot. You know, all the federal foot, universities of technology. Look, you, you see, we don't understand. We, you see, we don't understand the the trouble we are. You know, we, we, we are hoping that the, the, a white man will come here and help us and take, oh, it's never going to happen. It's mm -hmm. never going to happen until you think for yourself and help yourself in this world. Yeah. You see, so, 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 so when you have such a problem on the hand, you have to understand that you will have to think about the solution. So you got, you, we have one thing, we have the youth board. We have energetic youth, passionate youth, mm -hmm. imaginative youth, creative youth. Well, and you don't understand that all you have to do is give them a little bit of money and push them out and say, get something done. What is the big deal in, in, in the students of engineering in this country, civil engineering, mechanical and co, being they the ones roads. to ensure they patch on these our roads? Yeah. And you pay them, you know, token if it's 50000 every semester. So those are the kind of ideas I was throwing in the space. The rest was, I also believe that, um, you know, I should, I should have a skin in the game. So... A lot of the money that I spent was mine. Yeah. I got to sell a couple, one or two assets was mine. And then, of course, I raised a bit of money from those who felt that, my, that I wasn't doing something so crazy. Yeah. I'm very, very grateful to those people because it seemed very unlikely. You know what I'm saying? However, uh, like I've said before, a number of the ideas that I've thrown into the space are timeless ideas. Yeah. They will keep on coming up. People will keep on saying, oh, one guy said this, one guy said this, one guy said this. All the things, all the approaches that they are taking are so wasteful. If you're talking about, you're yeah, even doing uh, your, your, your um, uh, SIP, uh, this uh, government program, social investment program. Yeah. You know, 
I think the whole idea is that people, you know, when they're doing those things, they're just thinking, okay, uh, well, what can we get? Yeah. Otherwise, you could sit and plan these things better and put controls in place and put monitoring in place and ensure that those things are linked to productivity. Right now, you cannot say that the average Nigerian is more productive. No. As a result of the money you are giving them, uh, Empower is a failure because I went to schools all over Nigeria. You know, one of the things I did was, you know, I'm going on a convoy, you know, my three cars that I put on the road. I get to a public school, when passing the public school, I just say, stop. I come down, I just go in very simply, I remove my cap, whatever. Go in simply and ask for the headmistress or headmaster, you know, and see, you know. One of the things I noticed was in the north of this country, there weren't even teachers. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can see good, fairly good schools from the road. Go in there, you won't see anybody being taught. I usually went on a Monday morning. Okay. And no, in fact, the one I saw the most teachers was two teachers somewhere in Katsina State. The students may have been as many as 1,500. You know, in Zamfara State, I went to a school, one had one teacher, the other no teacher. They just came there, they said the government was also giving food. Some of the children ascended on Kent. Oh, you know, I, I, I just collect the food and go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I come to the south, okay, of course, most of the infrastructure is dilapidated. I went in you know, your state and your school state. Well, most of the infrastructure are dilapidated, but some teaching yeah, was some teaching yeah. was going on. Yeah. You know, I went to the southeast, I went as far as Igbere, going towards Abriba and so on. Branch in the school, the same thing. Some rigor was going on in terms of the teaching. You okay. know, so I said to myself that look, the north of this country, of course, the problem is, I mean, that's where our problem is right now. Truth be told. The north? Uh, yes, that's where the problem And the real the simple problem is that when you have children and you don't train them in mass like that, it is mass child abuse, if you ask me. It's mass child abuse. And they need to be helped. Now, it is not only a northern problem, it's not even only a Nigerian problem, it's a global problem because that's why you have the mass number of children that are being born today without any plans for them to be part of the modern world. So, you have those children, they don't have to go to school, they carry bowls up and down, come on. You know, so I know that a number of people up north are very worried about this. They need our help, all right? Yeah. Mr. President, unfortunately, during that campaign, when he was asked, you know, when he was asked in the Kadaria interview, he went on a tangent and said there was a problem for local governments to solve. I think that's quite irresponsible because that's such a big issue that you should, could never leave it to local governments to solve. To solve yeah. You know, it's a problem that should concern every one of us. So I know that a number of our friends, people like uh, Adamutilde and Co., people are very concerned about that problem because, look, if you have, 10 million children on the streets without education. Out of schools, that right. is 100 million ch children potentially in the future of your country who are also going to be disconnected. The moment a child, a youth is disconnected, that is straight to crime. I don't believe that what's going on right now is Almajiri fighting back. They haven't started fighting back. You see, they, 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 are, they are so conditioned not to fight back and not to see their state you know, as anything wrong. All those boys riding Okada in uh, Lagos mm -hmm. and all over the country, they are, they are, that's what they yeah, are. Yeah. The ones carrying load in the market and all of that, you know. The, the whole idea is some people believe that, look, it has to be like that because somebody has to do those jobs. Someone but you see, that is not futuristic. Yeah. When you're futuristic, you know that there's no space in the current world that we live in for such uh, slackness. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. those are some of my strategies, you know, yeah. and of course, I put the rest on social media through, through all my ideas there. I had... I was the only one I, I was running with flyers. I had these one page flyers, and at the back of it, if you see my picture in front, uh, vote top of fashion, but at the back will be an idea. You know, I'm talking about housing, or I'm yeah. talking about defense, I'm talking about, uh, you know, I'm talking about education, or I'm talking about health, and so on and so forth. You know, so I, I, I pushed out a lot of ideas. Of course, I knew that Nigeria is not a place that's Com you know, conducive idea. to ideas. Yeah. It's all right. But hey, sometimes we have to do some things in spite of the fact that those ideas will fail. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Do you think a coalition would have worked? And why do you think it the, didn't work? The coalition, well, okay, two things. It may have worked. It would have taken a lot of effort, a lot of calmness, right? You know, and I told them, when we came together as pact, right, I told them, I saw, I saw the future, I said, look, guys, the only thing that would happen is 
the, for this thing to work, total transparency, total transparency, 100%, like never before. Like, let our meetings be on social media, let it be on Facebook Live. Let Nigerians be able to say, well, that is Tokwe, that is Shore, that is whoever. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, of course, funny enough, I thought that the, the guys who organized the park, they were too quick to reject that idea. You know, and they said, no, we're going to determine who goes in three weeks. On what basis? And they said, we're going to vote among ourselves. I said, I'm not comfortable with that. You know, I mean, 11, 12 of us are gathered and you want to determine who we do. On what basis? I said, number one, put your meeting, put these meetings on, on social, social media. media. Number two, let's have debates. I said, let's begin to pair ourselves. We don't have to win. Nobody has to win. Yeah. But I, I said, that is how you're going to get the buy-in of the Nigerians. But the Nigerians themselves, did they know that? Look, Nigerians are more interested, especially uh, the youth. They are more interested in the in the in the um, uh, you know no, no, they're not interested in the conversation. They are more interested in the in the paparazzi, in the uh, who's the gay, gay guy. You know what I'm saying? You know, listen. You're not asking me what I have to offer you. You're asking me to step down. Step down for who and why? Do you even care if my ideas correlate with the guy you want me to step down for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So look. I know that popularism is a factor, a major factor in politics. You need to be known everywhere. And in fact, it could even be the only factor. However, I also understand that, look, in the point where Nigeria has found itself, we cannot hinge our politics and our future popularism. on popularism yeah. alone. Yeah. It's not a case of who is popular. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, that could have worked them. However, I also push back to let people know that, look, the first thing is we have come forward. We have stepped forward and to say that we can do this work. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Uh, if you give us some time, maybe the next time around will be the, the time to come together. However, the moment the elections were over, I started seeing you know people tweeting and all of that. Sometimes they would tag me and say, "You guys, you guys should do, start coming together now because you don't wait until 2022." You say, I think, what about you? If he's president, they know they they know they become president for your family. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want us to start a, a local government? Why aren't you starting a local government yourself? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, in fact, and then there's this group of people who say everybody wanted to be president in Nigeria. I don't know what they mean by that. You know what I'm saying? The point was that a number of the parties that were formed were formed because we just resisted and said that we were not going to join the APC or PDP, but we want to be part of the, elective, the, the politics it of seems, our country. Yeah. And that's valid. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to, you cannot cobble me into APC or PDP by all means. No, I'm not doing. You know, so we started those those things. So, but however, if you look at if you look at it, of course, there were 73 people wanted to vie. I mean, wanted to uh, vie for presidency, but about 53 of them stepped down for Buhari and Atiku. Okay. Less than 20, you know, eventually went forward went for the post, at, yeah. till the end. You know what I'm saying? And even among those, you can actually count by on your fingers who were, who and who. Really genuine. Who and who is. actually struggled, who and who went through around the country, who and who went for the debate. Imagine if all we had was one person. Would that be a debate? Yeah, when yeah, Atiku yeah. and, and Buhari refused to go, so if you had one person, Definitely. You just be there. Is the person going to debate himself? Where will those 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 basket of ideas come come, come out from? from? Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So uh, people will say all sorts of things that they want to say. I I, I think that uh, eventually, look, it's going to also be very very tough to get any coalition going. This is politics. People are so naive. You know that naivety. Then you don't bring. This is not. Um, this is not uh, academics. This is yeah. it's politics. You know, look it's in not politics. Black and white. In politics, in politics, you know, you realize that, look, some people, people are there, they're quite focused on what they want to achieve. Yeah. They're seeing themselves, they're seeing their dream. In fact, I would even add, and, and, and I would add one other thing, that in politics, a lot of people who get in, especially at that level, they are, they, they've got predictions from their pastors, from their imams, from their babalawos, that they are the ones that are going to get to that point. Yeah. So you now say you should come and do coalition. When at the back of their mind is the fact that the vision has been seen yeah. that they will oh, be president. Yeah. <laughs> Do people understand that? So you see that we're not just talking about efficiency. We're not talking about who can speak, who has ideas. Yeah. We're talking about all that complex things. You don't even know who is whose uh, 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 um, 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 who who's, uh, uh, godfather. Godfather, You don't know yeah. who's driving. Okay. Nobody has, you, know, you don't know who they're reporting to at the end of the day. Yeah. So coalitions are going to be extremely difficult. Nigeria should not depend on it. Look, as far as I'm concerned, I think that all the youth of this country, if you believe you have anything to offer, if, don't be a nuisance. Don't be a nuisance. If you have your own small money that you can use to project yourself, 
2023 is another uh, 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 period of time. By God's grace, this country will continue to remain as one and hopefully get better. You know, 2023, rush forward. I want to see sharp people. Yeah. You know, listen, this way this world evolves. I mean, in the time of Martin Luther King, you saw all those sharp guys with their white shirts and their black ties yes. and so on. Before, you know, we now started having all these people who wear their trousers on their ankles and so on. You know, we, th there was a time. That was the same time that these people like all the Buhari and Co. were being they groomed. In, yeah. At 27, some of them were, in, I mean, people like Jeta Smith were running a state, River State, which included the Rivers and, and, and Bayesa. In, at 27 years old, what about you? You know what I'm saying? Nobody, the one I will always fight is this, nobody should come and tell our youth that they cannot do it. Nobody should tell, look, so long as you fulfill the constitutional requirement, nobody yeah, should tell you there's something that's beyond you. That's yeah. my own. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. There's nothing in this world that I detest more than bullying. I think that systemat systematically, the youth of this country and the not so young are being bullied by these guys. We know that they have power, they've taken all the money, but they've run the country aground. This is not where we're supposed to be in the, in, in the pecking order of life. Yeah. They are showing that Nigeria, look, just yesterday, I was reading somewhere, Nigerian girls are being sold in Mali for 200,000 naira into sex slaves, you know. Yeah. The, in, in Libya, our boys are being sold for $400. Come on, go to South Africa. In 2014, she already did that, 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 that uh, uh, documentary in Pretoria where you saw a lot of our boys, hundreds of them in asylums, asylum seekers in Pretoria being hunching, hunched up all over the place. You know, they even kind of doubling them up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, doing frog jump. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have become an international embarrassment mm -hmm. as a Facebook. people. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, therefore, it is also left to us to ensure that we, we rescue ourselves from this, from this predicament because these guys seem not to be interested. I would like to ask you two questions. You've answered one of them, which is like projection. So how do you think Nigeria and Nigerians should prepare for future elections. 2023 is around the corner, like you mentioned. Just like I said before, it's about stepping forward. It's about knowing, you know, knowing that you can get it done. It's about not allowing anybody to bully you. It's about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, there's never going to be a time when everything will be in perfect condition. There's never going to be a time when all the conditions will be complete. For you to get what you want to do. Okay, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Therefore, you have to know that, look, if you can find 80% of the condition to be right, or 70%, get it done. Number one, if you can find a bit of money to do a few printing stuff, you got the ideas, number one, you know, you got the ideas as well, you know, you, go for it. You know a few people, you have a certain small movement yeah. of people that support what you do. You know, you have a platform, go for it. You're never going to be, you, you want the perfect, you no, know, in, in, in mathematics, we talk about the Venn diagram, where you draw, you know, you draw those three circles and that thing in the middle. So Nigeria, you, know, you want to join the party that can win. Do you know how many people left ANRP, ANRP, and went to APC earlier in the day, and they ate their money there? People that were begging, oh, come and take from my 200,000 naira. They say, no, I can never. They go to APC, they pay 4 million. Yeah. Then they go and bribe the chairman of the local government, bribe the chairman of the state in the APC, and then they add their money. Look, we cannot continue to run things based on criminality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it is valid. I would say to the youth, in order to prepare for next... And look, let's not deceive ourselves. This whole idea that some people don't vote, some people vote, is false in this country. I believe that the entire youth of this country are interested in their future. We are not going to de de discourage them. The, the alternative to what we're doing, which is democratic uh, politics, is, is anarchy. Yeah. You know? So except we're ready for that anarchy, let's continue to put hope and faith in the entire process of what we're doing. Let's talk about INEC as an institution, as, as an election umpire. How do you think they fared in the last election? Being like you were in the mix too, so you'd have noticed certain things that. Well, you know, if you talk to guys in INEC, you believe that they really want to do the right thing, you know. But hey, Nigerians are in INEC. Let me tell you for free INEC is split between APC and PDP, right? The human beings that are there. Yes. Okay. That split between APC. It's, it's been like that before we came up. Okay. You know, I've been, I've talked to some people there and they will tell you that, look, that Jonathan did not do the right thing. They know what they told Jonathan. Why is why he lost? And why is this so? Because, of course, don't forget, the, the chairman of INEC, the entire commissioners of INEC, 
down to their director. All of these people are appointed by, by, the, by the government. Yeah. So what do you do? So people begin to bring ideas on, okay, how do you ensure independence? That word independence in their name is difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. Where does the chairman have to come from? And the commissioners. Yeah. They may not be cat carry members. Some of them may be of parties. Well, but the members. moment that you are being paid by a certain government, you have a certain loyalty to that government. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have a vestige of PDP people in Nynek who, because PDP had been in government since 1999, and be paying them, paying them their salaries, giving them their appointment. You know how people get appointments in this country? Yeah. You want to be a director, you have to lobby in some places. You want to be a DG, or well, you have to lobby in the right places. So these people have got to that point by lobbying. Do you think they're going to forget where they're coming from? They can't. So, so that's the, the that, that's the issue there. That you know, then but then, then APC now came in. Then that now empowered some people from within. Yeah. You know, some of them are Buharists. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and so 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 when I look at this, I can't blame Einek. Okay, it is what we are as a people. Niger Ni Nigeria's populate INEC, they didn't come from mass. It is what we have become. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the problems we had with the elections were problems created by politicians as well. So INEC can just be a kind of organization with having so many rats all over the place trying to chase. You know, if you, if you don't chase one at, at a point in time, you won't kill any. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I would put a lot of the blame on INEC, of course, uh, it is what it is, until we're able to solve that problem of how the person who runs INEC is elected. How uh, and, and you know, this, exactly. So you see, then back to our culture as a people. Mm -hmm. All right, so come this season, you know, come like, you know, we have Ramadan now and all of that. People are going to visit people. People are going to be nice to people. People are going to send gifts around. Mm -hmm. So if a politician sends a gift to the INEC wreck, maybe a, a wreck in a state, and say, ah, ah salam alaikum, oh, this, oh, oh, Merry Christmas. You know what I mean? Oh, these things have many. Number one, number two. You see, the, what we have become as a people, that, for example, the INEC man, maybe his is, maybe is, is legitimate earning is two million naira every month. Yeah. Meanwhile, he has, a, he has a son in Harvard, another one in Yale, one is going to Oxford. How does he pay for that? And you cannot tell him not to go because he, he tell you that he saw God before him also yeah, sent his children to those places. Yeah. So look at us. The kind of economy, look, <laughs> we are moving, we, we've been running a, a modern British type, Western style economy with a, a traditional mindset. That's why someone believes that, look, if you can have 40 children, you know, if you have 40 children and you have to send them all through Western school, then you have to be corrupt. Because you have to find the money one way or the other. Yes, sir. That's it. Okay, so over over hundred, if you rate I neck based on what you just discussed, what you just said. No, I was I, I, when they did the presidential, I forgave them. I said, well, I could give them seven percent. When they did the state elections, I was totally disappointed in I neck So I'll give them forty five percent now. Okay. Yeah, because that the state elections were a fiasco. You know, they were they were a fiasco. They were especially they, in states like Kano. Absolutely, Shokoto, look at you know, I mean, Adama. a major fiasco. But you see, what again, I would say, the people who come to consider INEC are Nigerians. Yeah. Mind you, that INEC too. They, I mean, they they went and got well, not INEC per se, but National Assembly guys, especially the guys that were in APC, the real APC guys, people like Nazif, you know, and also yeah. some PDP guys went and kind of quote-unquote smuggled a constitution, constitutional amendment to say that INE can now deregister political parties mm -hmm. if you don't win 25% this mm -hmm. and that. But however, when you interpret that law, you will see, except they want to do something by fiat too. But if they don't do fiat, they can't even implement yeah. the law because the law says until, until, we can, until the last local government election it's is conducted, the last councillorship election is conducted, and you say, okay, all the parties that can't find 25% at that level, yeah. now you are deregistered. However, even if you deregister them, they can still even in the registration, all those parties qualify to be re-registered. You understand what I'm saying? So, okay, I want to register a party today. You say, okay, fine. 20, you have to have members from 25 states. You have to have office in Abuja and all of that stuff. Yeah. If you deregister me today, I still qualify to, to be re-registered. So why de-register me? They're just wasting your time. Because yeah. I'm going to come back. 
Yeah. You know, except maybe if they want to make it more stringent, in which case they have to go back to a constitutional amendment yeah. to make the conditions for registering political parties even more stringent. However, I say to people that the whole idea of proliferation of parties is a cry for help. Look, mm. if, if APC and PDP were ideologically delineated, like the conservatives and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, you know, and, and the, and the, um, uh, Labour Party, for, for example, or the Democrats and the Republicans. Republicans. And we could see that, okay, fine. But the moment you see people, they lose here, they run to the other one, and it's all about money. It's all about how we can get paid and where we can get the position. That means that they are one and the same. God forbid the day that we would only have APC and PDP in this country because at that point in time, we would have had only one party. It would be a one-party state. Yeah. But you see, if you want to do a one-party state, let's go back to China democracy. You see how strict they are. Yeah. And those are people of integrity, not this nonsense that we're doing here. You know what I'm saying? So, so God forbid that we'll get to that point where it will only be APC. This, what we're doing now is a cry for help. And I'll tell you what, that if you're going to ever have you know, any semblance of sanity in our politics and in the ideas that drive the economy, you're going to find them from these same small people. parties yeah. that people are disparaging right yeah. now. Right. When I speak and the ideas that I expo espouse and expose to late, you know, you know that, look, someone is coming from, I'm coming from one position, a clean heart yeah. and, and, you know, a, a desire to see my country. I mean, look, of late, I stopped writing. You know, I got tired of writing about Flying down here this morning, I said, no, I think I, I can't be arrogant. You know, of course, you write, nobody gets to use it. Those who can steal the ideas are stealing. It doesn't matter. But I think I'll continue to write and put my ideas. Out. Only that I don't like sounding like a broken record. I don't like sounding like, uh, like a loser. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody wants to be a loser. Mm -hmm. I believe that this country can be a lot more prosperous. If you follow my writing, you see that I'm talking about, you know, much more prosperity. I'm talking about thinking big for our people, yeah. not this thing that we're doing right now. Yeah.